Hello and welcome to Technology Update. This month we're taking a look at a topic that hits, well, close to home. In Russia, many innovations in terms of new building materials have come from the country's tiny tech leader, Rus Nano. And at an exhibition in Moscow recently, the company showed off its latest offerings from its aptly named Nano House. Here you can find many of the newest developments, all containing, you guessed it, the prefix Nano. The state-owned company has selected a number of projects that it thinks have the best potential to revolutionize home building in the future. Now all of the ideas ought to make where we reside more livable. But the overriding theme definitely seems to be energy efficiency, which will benefit not only the individual homeowners, but the whole earth as well. Now this is just a simple exhibition, but a design and consulting firm, AECOM, has planned a full-scale model complete with all the high-tech developments. And that will eventually get built in Russia's Chuvash Republic, some 700 kilometers east of Moscow. While it may not grab all the headlines, construction materials made from basalt will create the base for everything else in the house. It could find its way into more and more homes in the future, but basalt is nothing new to Russian scientists. The volcanic rock that comes from the hot magma at the center of the Earth is one of the more common resources on the planet. As a result, basalt and its benefits have been on the radar of people in Moscow for more than 50 years. Soviet specialists were definitely the pioneers in creating basalt-based continuous fibers. This work began at the end of the 1940s. Researchers at the Glass Fiber Institute got their first positive results at the beginning of the 1950s, on the basis of which they wrote their first reports. In 1954 there was the first magazine article on the topic. It appeared in the Glass and Ceramics magazine. Western specialists recognized the role of the Soviet Union in this research. Looking at every relevant characteristic, basalt-based fiber outperforms steel. It's significantly stronger and more flexible, which has obvious advantages in construction. It's also lighter, so transporting it is easier and more economical. Additionally, it doesn't degrade when exposed to the elements. Taken together, it's no wonder production of these fibers is on the rise. To start with, quarry basalt rock is first crushed, washed, and loaded into melting baths. Here the stones are liquefied at a temperature of 1,500 degrees Celsius. As the basalt filaments cool, a sizing agent is applied and the filaments are stretched out and eventually spooled. Due to the fact that basalt fibers are made from a single raw material, they're significantly easier to produce than others. What we do, we manufacture composite materials. Uh, based on different types of fibers, including basalt. Initial fiber there is uh, three times thinner than a uh, person's uh, hair. Mm -hmm. So you could see it's a very, very fine, uh, fine product. So um, out of that product, you can make a lot of stuff which is fireproof, uh, which is uh, more energy efficient and uh, very strong. But to get those compound basalt materials, the fibers have to be reworked or pultruded first. The pultrusion process starts with raw fiber being pulled off the racks and guided through a resin bath. The simple resin can be combined with additional mixtures that give the fiber extra desired properties, like enhanced thermal conductivity and fire resistance. Even though the resin makes up only a small fraction of the composite, certain nanoparticles can increase the material's overall strength by up to 25%. Even before us, there were attempts to use basalt fiber to reinforce armature, but we were the only ones that managed to start major industrial production of it. But before the composites can hit the market, they still have to be heated, dried, and cut to the appropriate length. They can be used to make concrete structures more sound, form wind or water turbine blades, and even make lightweight wings and fins for aerospace. But these you see here will be used to make flexible wall ties. In comparison to traditional steel or wire ones, these conduct significantly less heat, which can greatly reduce energy loss through your walls. But basalt composites are just one aspect of the futuristic nano house. With the help of Russian investment, energy-efficient windows are being developed for the benefit of both your wallet and the environment. Considering that up to 30% of your home's energy flies right out the window, improvements in glass technology can mean big savings. Thanks to a recent investment deal, this existing production facility will be spruced up and a brand new one will be built nearby. 
The focus will be on low E coated glass, which most experts believe to be the future of glass technology. And that's why back in December, reps from Rus Nano and international partners gathered in Moscow to ink plans to boost not just production, but the application of new windows in Russia. The share of energy efficient glass with a nano structured coating is only 5 to 7 percent in our country. It is obvious that gradually changing the situation won't help. We need to take radical steps, which is what is happening today. Energy efficient coatings let solar rays in mostly unhindered, but bounce infrared or long wave radiation back to the heat source. As a result, more than 70% of the warmth stays inside the building. Now, there are two types of energy saving window glazes. One is a hard pyrolytic coating, which is called online, while the second is a so called offline soft glaze. We get the hard coating by applying a thin layer of tin oxide during the float glass process. And soft glazing is a result of depositing a fine film of silver molecules on the window surface. Exactly what type of energy efficient glass will be produced at the soon to be built factory remains to be seen. But regardless of whether it's a hard coat or soft, it'll certainly be a step away from the ordinary glass that's produced at the existing plant now. In addition to low E windows, the company is also planning to produce some other types of next generation glass. Among the more interesting options are a self cleaning kind that takes advantage of photocatalytic and hydrophilic processes to wash the dirt away before your very eyes. Additionally, ultra transparent or sun reflecting windows can be produced as the need arises. In any case, the ultimate goal of this project is to increase the domestic production and uptake of these windows in Russia. Just as some of these windows are designed to improve the energy efficiency of our homes and buildings, there's a new type of insulation that ought to keep us warmer and safer as well. However, producing this heat retaining filler is a dirtier job than you might expect. That's because this latest material starts out as a byproduct of modern life. Out in the Vladimir region east of Moscow, Vlad Polytex takes used plastic bottles that get chucked out by the boatload. Here, these recycled bottles are sorted, chopped, and cleaned. Then the recycled material is dried out and melted down. In these vats, that gets heated at 250 degrees Celsius for several hours. It's then pushed through a series of screens and filters until this fine filament here is extracted. From one ton of bottles, we end up with 650 kilograms of usable fiber. That's then bundled together and soaked with a type of mineral oil. That oil fulfills a dual role. It gives the fibers an anti static property, as well as makes it more difficult for the fibers to break during further production. At this stage, the long strands of gathered fiber are pulled through a series of rollers and baths. Over the course of this long line, they're heated up, stretched out, and have excess liquid squeezed out several times. However, during this whole process, there's a bit of a novelty that takes place, which sets these insulating fibers apart from many others. As the fibers pass through one of the liquid baths, certain chemicals are used to create microscopic pores or crazes. At present, on this one experimental production line, Vlad Polytex is able to churn out 500 tons of fiber every month. We managed to get thermal insulation material, which, according to its characteristics, according to its parameters in terms of thermal conductivity, water retention, and vapor permeability is either the same or even superior to similar insulation made from basalt fiber, fiberglass, or styrofoam. At the same time, its traits in terms of elasticity, dust formation, and fire safety are much better than anything else on the market today. Now, what's responsible for the improved performance is what you see here. These nano sized crevices are created by something called the crazing method, whereby chemicals burrow into the fiber. And it's these little nooks and crannies that allow Vlad Polytex to give their insulation additional properties. Depending on what they choose, they can embed a whole host of different characteristics, all at a fraction of the price at which other competitors have been able to do. Unlike glass fiber insulation, these made from plastic are non irritating to work with and don't readily burn. 
But traditional insulation isn't the only thing the company's been working on. It's still under development, but they could soon come out with an insulating material made from plastic bottles that can transmit electric signals, which could totally revolutionize the way houses are wired. But moving from the stuff that's behind the walls to what's inside them. Another project that's found its place in the nano house gives you more freedom than ever before. Now you can take your favorite painting or picture and apply it to just about any surface you can imagine. The company behind this is Sun Innovations, which you may recall from a previous technology update program when we covered the Roos Nano Forum. Well, since that time, we caught up with them at their headquarters out in Novosibirsk to see what developments could spruce up even the dullest of walls. The main breakthrough from these tireless innovators is their new and improved ultraviolet LED printers. These bad boys offer many benefits over traditional lamp-powered printing operations. Instead of gobbling up 30 kilowatts an hour, these diodes only use about as much as an ordinary tea kettle. We were the first in the world to use light-emitting diodes to solidify ink. This technology saves energy, prevents materials from overheating, and there is no ozone output in the process. Now the printers are really only one part of the story. Without equally high-tech ink, they might not stand out from their competitors. But with massive improvements like instant drying, their UV-cured dyes can bring life to practically anything in your home. And here in their labs, they've also been working on a wide range of other goodies, like metallic conductive inks that can be used to print circuit boards and sun-soaking solar panels, as well as an ecological dye for plastic bottles. And maybe most importantly, they've been the first to develop an antibacterial ink infused with silver particles, as well as a new type of fluorescent dye that can help in the fight against counterfeiters. First of all, there are the electronics of this printer. Our company developed all the electronic equipment for it. So we are constantly modifying it, upgrading it, making it print even faster. As a result of their relentless efforts, Sun Innovations has come out with the UV LED Super Fast Hybrid. In the race to be the quickest, there are several novelties that help give the company a leg up. For one, the white printer heads spit out ink simultaneously as the colored image is being applied. However, as is often the case, the real star of the show is concealed behind the scenes. These Kalinka electronic boards being assembled are really what give them their extra boost. Their appropriately titled Turbo Speed printer combines the best of both worlds, top shelf quality and high speed. And that's given these innovators something to brag about. This will be the first printer which will be able to print with such high speed using LEDs. We will first present it at the Drupa Print Media Fair in Dusseldorf, which will be held on May the 3rd through 16th. This exhibit takes place every four years. It gathers everyone from the printing world and will be presenting there. So just how fast is fast, you might be asking? Well, according to the time trials, the latest from Sun Innovations can lay around 120 square meters of ink every hour on average. But it's not just the speed that sets this Russian company apart. It's a versatility. Unlike others, their hybrid can handle anything up to 200 millimeters thick. So that means it can put your desired image on any surface in or around your home. But nano isn't the only word on people's lips these days. There's another high-profile project highlighting that the latest building trends have arrived in Russia. The brainchild of a Danish company, Velux, this so-called active house is only one of a handful in the world. Its goal is to balance between energy savings and healthy indoor climate. However, some of the technologies incorporated have yet to be tested in an environment like Russia's. So with a mind to monitoring just how everything holds up, a young family moved in last December to act as the home's guinea pigs. All the building stats will be closely measured. You can even check them online to see just how much energy things like the solar panels are collecting. We tried to draw on the long history of wood construction and took maximum advantage of the new possibilities offered by the latest technologies. So the whole house is made out of wood, the frame, facades and roof. 
One of the objectives was to let as much sunlight in as possible. So every room is let ten times more than it is generally required. Even now, with all this snow outside, if you go inside, you will see there's a lot of light. However, given the extreme cold of Russian winters and the plus 30 degrees Celsius weather in the summer, a specialized construction had to be found. That task fell to NLK Domostrainya. Here at their design bureau in Moscow, architects and engineers worked together to find a way to minimize heat losses from the building itself. Sometimes overlooked in the hunt for increasing energy efficiency, so-called thermal bridges can result in serious heat loss. To combat that, they came up with a new, interesting solution. A house must be energy efficient. We calculated that the walls had to be very thick and required a lot of insulation. The insulation layers are arranged in criss-cross pattern. You can see here on the blueprint that none of the pieces line up. Therefore, no direct thermal bridges can form. So the wall is highly impermeable. This is an actual size sample of the wall. Here we can see how the house was built. Thanks to this specific wall construction, the house is three times more energy efficient than our technical standards require. In terms of insulation, we were able to make our wall more homogeneous. The paths for thermal bridges are a lot longer now. As air tries to travel from the cold exterior to the warm interior, it has to overcome a lot of obstacles on its way because of the design of the frame. With these walls in the winter, you can keep the whole house warm enough with just a fireplace, even in minus 30 degree weather. But this is more than just a passive house. It takes the fight for energy efficiency right to the environment itself. With the help of a host of intelligent components, it automatically regulates several systems to maximize energy savings and comfort. And by using the earth as a heat source in the winter and a heat sink in the summer, the home's geothermal pumps generate all the heating that's needed. Regardless of the weather above, a few meters below, the temperature remains stable all year round. And geothermal pumps can harness this free source of potential energy to cover the majority of our needs. Now the heart of this system is a ground source heat pump that delivers natural warmth to a cold liquid refrigerant, which turns it into a vapor. That's then pressurized and further heated up in a compressor. That in turn is used to power central heating and hot water systems. As it loses its latent heat, the vapor returns to liquid form. And at this point, the process starts all over again. All this follows the principles of Carnot's cycle, which describes the maximum efficiency of a thermodynamic system. This principle has been around for more than a century, but thanks to modern advances, it can be applied to our everyday needs. With this house, we are testing the newest technologies to see how they will work in our climate. We are especially interested in testing this heat pump in real-world conditions. We also want to find out how much electricity the house will consume. We will compare the results to the hypothetical figures that Velux came up with during the planning phase. We'll see. Well, the good news is that despite a pretty bitter cold snap in February, the Tess family made it through completely unscathed. In addition to the generally good atmosphere the house has created, the ground source pumps provided more than enough heat to keep them and all their little ones nice and toasty. And that's certainly no small feat considering the spacious interior and high, high ceilings of the building. It's always warm in here, and if the temperature does drop, one can adjust it manually. This heat pump unit is powerful enough to keep all this space, all the rooms and all the floors warm enough, just everywhere, upstairs and downstairs. And as far as I understand it, in cloudy weather the solar panel doesn't produce energy. But this power collector still takes care of both heating and air conditioning. It feels just like summertime. But all this hasn't come cheap, especially given the complex engineering decisions required during the planning process. 
But beyond that, direct construction costs ate up the lion's share of the budget, coming in at well over half a million. Throw in electricity, the very latest in home automation, as well as the finishing touches both inside and out, and the total cost of Velux's active house topped a cool one million dollars. However, as more of these homes get built, the price should fall, making them more affordable for the average home buyer. But you don't have to build a fancy house out in the suburbs to take advantage of the latest breakthroughs in home optimization. Even in the humblest of settings, you can turn your simple abode into a high-tech habitat. Welcome home. Lights and electronics have been switched to the at-home mode. While in the past such so-called smart homes were nothing more than a fantasy for everyone other than the super rich, but on the back of advances in microelectronics and computing capabilities, homeowners with a little spare cash can turn their nest into an automated sanctuary. But it's not just increased comfort that home automation offers. Thanks to system integrators like luxury systems here in Russia, an optimized house can save homeowners hundreds of dollars a month on electricity, heating, and water alone. While there are plenty of software options out there on the market, this integrator has found one Russian company, Iridium Mobile, whose product is way ahead of the competition. The advantage over similar products made in the West is that this program can be integrated with virtually any automation system. It is flexible enough to support all of them and it also gives the installer the tools to customize the user interface to conveniently control all sorts of equipment from one page. This eliminates the task of having to map two different systems. Another advantage is that this program can be installed on virtually any mobile device, as well as on PCs featuring the traditional Windows software. It is also compatible with Mac products such as the iPad and iPhone, as well as the Android platform. In other words, there are practically no limits for it. While flashy interfaces and mobile controls are pleasing on the eye, they'd be useless without this unassuming maze of wires. Here the Russian-made controller system gives the owner peace of mind no matter what happens. That's because unlike other home automation systems, this one developed and produced by a company called Owen has a foolproof backup plan that gives additional protection in the case of any kind of power outage or emergency situation. Such backups are necessary for industrial customers who form the backbone of the company's clients. Large-scale manufacturers have been exploiting Owen's know-how for decades. However, as home automation has caught on in Russia, they started adapting their products to work on small-scale projects like in an individual house or apartment. In doing so, they've been able to transfer their treasure trove of knowledge and experience in the industrial sphere and apply it to benefit the little guy. And because their hardware was originally designed to handle massive, highly complex tasks, the controllers they make for homes have significant spare capacity and capability. Fortunately for the developers at Owen, tweaking the dispatch controllers for the home hasn't required all that much additional work. Since we already have experience in industrial applications, we simply take advantage of what we can already do and just use it in completing orders for private homes. Naturally, all equipment passes all the same relevant checks since testing is a mandatory part of the production process. Another important factor is ensuring that the required quality standards are adhered to throughout the process, which are also monitored and maintained by the means of tests. But to make their products ideal for home automation, additional threats have to be considered. Here, Owen technicians are making sure their adapted products won't be negatively affected by electromagnetic fields, which are far more likely to cause some kind of problem at home than at a big factory. Such detailed considerations make life for system integrators a whole lot easier. Let's take, for example, this controller made by Owen. It is designed for automating moderately complex units. What I find convenient about it is that whenever it's necessary to replace this controller, we do not have to detach all these wires. It's simply enough to remove the top and bottom panels and replace them. It features a pre-installed embedded Linux core, which gives us a more up-to-date programming environment 
that allows one to create multi-controller projects. We can assemble the target controller from just the modules that will eventually be required for the system. We simply extend the main module with all the additional bits we'll need. On the programming level, this enables us to cluster the modules, which means that all functions of any failed controller can be taken over by another, still operable one. Well, that'll do it for this edition of Technology Update. Hopefully some of the innovations you've seen will help make your home truly your castle. We'll see you next time, and until then, enjoy the ride. Away from home, mode activated. Lights and electronics will be switched off. Alarm system activated. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.